the states, parties to this constitution, believing in full and equal e opportunities of education for all, in the unrestricted pursuit of objective truth, and in the free exchange of ideas and knowledge, are agreed and determined to develop and to increase the means of communication between their peoples, and to employ these means for the purposes of mutual understanding and a truer and more perfect knowledge of each other's love. In consequence thereof, they do hereby create the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. Children who attend school exercise their right to education. Every child on the planet must have access to free primary education. UNESCO is piloting efforts by the international community to ensure that by 2015, education for all becomes a reality. 774 million citizens don't know how to read and write, and one child out of three never sees the inside of a classroom. UNESCO seeks to end continuing discrimination against girls who represent more than half the children without access to education. Increasing the number of boys and girls who go to school is not enough. Through our Associated Schools Project Network, we want to improve the quality of education at all levels and reduce by half the number of illiterate adults by 2015. We are developing innovative methods to encourage lifelong learning and to train school teachers who are the guardians of education standards. UNESCO also wants to guarantee the right to education in emergency situations, and to do that, the organization rebuilds education systems in post-war regions or those in crisis. In devastated countries, more is required than building classrooms. We have to reduce intolerance and terrorism by reforming school curricula and revising history books and using creative education methods, we must restore confidence in those who have suffered from the effects of war. UNESCO also orchestrates action by the international community to improve education about HIV-AIDS and how to prevent it. Water as the source of life. Through its exact and natural science program, and its role as Secretariat of the UN's Programme for the Evaluation of Water Resources, UNESCO contributes to the United Nations' efforts to reduce by half the number of people in the world who lack access to drinking water by 2015. Water must be managed in a sustainable and fair way. Water is a precious resource, especially in urban areas and in arid or semi-arid zones. UNESCO works towards the protection of the Earth's natural resources by encouraging the use of renewable energies such as wind power. The organisation contributes to raising public awareness of how important and efficient the different forms of alternative energy are especially solar power. We are constantly building scientific networks for the study of freshwater resources, climate changes, the state of the oceans and natural disasters. 
UNESCO is party to the United Nations International Disaster Prevention and Preparedness Strategy. UNESCO set up the first tsunami warning system in the Pacific Ocean in 1968. Today we are extending the network around the globe. Our world network of biosphere reserves enables us to monitor global warming, managing natural resources while fostering economic growth, a process known as sustainable development, is one of UNESCO's key strategies. The main principle of UNESCO's social and human science program is to promote principles, practices and ethical standards for research and scientific progress. The International Convention Against Doping in Sport encourages countries to set up programs to raise awareness among athletes and to educate them about the dangers of doping. In each of our fields of expertise, we contribute to the implementation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. When, in 2005, our member states adopted the Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions, they reiterated their conviction that the diversity of cultural expression is heritage shared by all humanity and that it is a moral imperative to defend it. UNESCO also endeavours to protect and preserve our heritage in all its forms. More than 800 cultural and natural sites are registered in the World Heritage List. Angkor is one example of how an endangered heritage site damaged by pillaging, war or natural catastrophe has been protected. UNESCO protects museums and helps in museum management and training and in the prevention of illicit art trafficking. The 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage protects oral traditions and rituals and festive events. Beyond borders and continents, all our activities foster better dialogue and better communication among cultures. UNESCO encourages intercultural dialogue, especially through the study and a dispassionate reading of history. UNESCO also stresses the need for linguistic diversity. One of the communication sector's main priorities is making technology accessible for education and development. UNESCO assists community radio stations. It also supports multimedia and television centres in isolated areas in developing countries. These centres provide access to digital information and create training opportunities, particularly for women and young people. UNESCO promotes diversity of content in the media, notably by encouraging production of local television programmes. UNESCO is engaged in an unwavering fight for press freedom and freedom of ideas.
It's through all these strategies and activities that we work towards the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. Among these goals are reducing by half the number of people in the world living in extreme poverty by 2015. The UNESCO headquarters in Paris and its world network of research and training institutes acts as an idea laboratory in all these fields as they share and disseminate information and know-how in all of the organization's member states. UNESCO considers that education, science, culture and communication as means to achieve the ambitious aim of its founding charter. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defences of peace must be constructed. <laughs>